Hi, everybody. I went live a couple minutes early so that I could get my other computer set up here. So just a second. Let's see here. Takes a second for it to show up here. Okay, so it came up as a sales thing. Just a second. We have a technical issue here. Hopefully you'll eventually get to see my live video. <laughs> I had this happen once before. Um, second here. This happened once before to me, so I got to get something turned off here. Just a second. Is anybody seeing me or anything yet? Because I can't see a thing yet. So just a minute. Oh, here we go. I think I'm up. Is it, are people hearing me? I think I have. Oh, I have a picture. We're good. Okay turn on so okay the um what they like to do every now and then they think something needs to be a sales thing so then they then they make it into like a marketplace ad i don't know what did they do for for lives so is everybody hearing me can you message me and let me know okay oh here we go oh hi deb hi margaret so is everybody seeing my picture of my little purse Okay, so you're hearing me. Okay, yeah, I had, sorry, I had a little trouble. I had to turn, for some reason, they do this every now and then, and I have a feeling it's from the word carousel because that is like, a, there's like a, 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 a car business that is like carousel motors. And I wondered if maybe they were thinking I was going to be selling something. <laughs> so anyway, so people are hearing me okay? Oh, Margaret can hear me. Okay, Deb can hear me. Cool. Thank you, guys. Oh, hi, Cindy. Kathy's here. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Jackie. So if Kathy's here, probably Orland's here, but I don't see him. Uh, let's see. Can see in here. Okay, so everybody's seeing the picture of my little purse up on the screen. All right, so now I can, I can see in here everybody now, I think, or I can see everybody typing to me, so. Sorry about that. Yeah, every now and then Facebook does this weird little thing and I've had it happen to me a couple times that, you know, they think that the live is like some sort of a selling thing and, and they want to put it on um, the marketplace area or something. I don't know what it is. So, but it's weird and it, it's happened two or three times. So I have to hit a bunch of buttons to get it to turn off. So, cool. So the, so the little picture is um, what I've been working on today. I wanted to, I've been wanting to make this little purse. I thought it was so cute. It's um, it's one of the little clasp purses, but this is a sewn one. And you sew the little purse and put the little handles on, and then um, you put the clasp on. So I got that done today. This is some of the shop pop fabric from a couple of years ago. that are like, hi, Pat, hi, Denise. So that's, that's what I was working on today was that little clasp purse. I thought it was cute. I'd like to do a class with, um, with, I'd like to make some of these. I think we're going to do it in September, but I'm not sure. Um, I was going to show you a couple pictures tonight and see if anybody has an opinion. I thought this one was really cute. Um, this little purse with the handles. And then I did, um, second here, I did, oh, I did this one with the curvy clasp. I think I put that one up on the um, Sew Along with Jan group. And the one with the curvy clasp, and that one's really cute. So I've got, I'll put that one up for a second so people can look at it. This one's harder to sew though. It has a gusset on the, on the underneath. So um, the gusset's a little bit harder than some of the other ones are. The other one has like a boxed bottom. So are people liking those? I can see some, some people with little thumbs up. So I kind of like this one. I like that curved clasp. I think it's kind of cool. 
And then I made a little coin purse, which was cute. Let me put that one up so you can see it. This little coin purse was really cute and it's real small. So it's harder though to get like the little, um, the clasp in because it's quite small. So those, the other two are much larger and the clasps are much easier to install than these little ones. So this would not be one that I'd probably do as a beginning class because it's, it's hard to get the clasp in. I really struggled with this one because it was so small, but I thought it was cute. Um, I made it around 4th of July, so it has, it has a little patriotic stuff on it. So, oh, hi, Cheryl. Hi, Cindy. So we got, oh, we got two Cheryls, one with an S and one with a C. <laughs> hi, Marcia. Oh, hi, Colleen. Everybody's finding me. Yeah, you might have had a little trouble finding me at first because I was having trouble. So maybe I'm going to wait just a couple minutes before um, we start so that makes sure people can see me because we were just having a little technical issue. So, but anyway, this was, this is what I did today. I thought I had fun making the little, the little purse with the handles. And uh, I liked that. That was my, one of my favorite shop hop fabrics was the one with the big postage stamps on it. So I really liked that one. <laughs> and uh, that I made the inside, I should have taken a picture of the inside. It was the blue with the words that had all the names of the stores on it. So that's what's inside of it. But that was really fun. So that, these are some of the things I'm working on for August and September classes. And then um, in, we're going to do an embroidered one of these little purses. So I'd like to do that in... Um, I think we'll do that one in August. So I'll show you a picture of that one later because I haven't got it. I don't know that I've got a picture of that one yet. So, all right. So those are some of the things I've been working on today. So hopefully you guys were having fun and working on things or it was very nice outside. So if you, maybe you were, some of you were outdoors, I kind of hang out inside most of the time. So <laughs> I don't like heat very well. <laughs> okay. So tonight though, we're going to make some of these little ornaments in the PEP software. Aren't they cute, Cindy? Yeah, I like making, I like, I like doing these. I really struggle getting the, learning to do the, the, the clasp, the hardware. And so now I finally figured out how to do it and I have a special glue and it works really well. Okay, so we're going to make um, these little ornaments tonight. And these are really easy to do. I took some classes while I was off, you know, during the, the spring. And um, one of the classes I did was on the carousel tool. They used to call it the circle tool, um, and now they call it the carousel tool. And I have used it several times for other things, but I just hadn't thought about it. Well, I like these. I've seen these with the names um, done with like snowflakes so that you could make um, personalized gifts for Christmas. And I thought these would be really fun to do with the circle tool because you can put your name in it or a child's name or whatever, whoever's a family member's name and then make a special ornament just for them that has their name on it. And it's not hard. They're super easy and they wouldn't take long, you know, to do for if you have to do a bunch of them. Um, and I did two different versions. So the first version I did was this one with a single color of, of my name. And what, what we're going to do, and you'll see when we get started here, you're going, you take the name and you just type it out in the software and then you mirror it, like vertically mirror it so that it's underneath. And then each of the little tines is my name twice hooked together. Okay. So I did one of them in the single colors like this. And so this one ended up being kind of red, white, and blue because I was doing these around 4th of July. And then, whoops, second here. And then the other one, I thought it'd be pretty to do one that had two colors in the words. So I made this one. It's the same design, and I'll show you how to do both of them. Um, same design with two different colors in it. And then um, and then I just did, did it in two colors. Now, I did mine in uh, metallic thread. The, the lettering on this is relatively small, so I'm just going to tell you... Um, the metallic thread probably wasn't my, the best choice because the thread's a little thicker and it wanted to break quite a bit because we I was do, I was doing very very small lettering. Um, so if I did these again, I probably would do them in number sixty thread just because the lettering's a little on the small or just regular number forty. Um, but the but the I managed to get them done with the uh, with the metallic, and um, I like this this green and green and red one so. 
Um, so I'm going to show you how to make both of these tonight. And then I'll tell you at the end how I sewed them. They're, they're super simple. And all you do is these are four inch um, of those little um, hand, wood hand um, embroidery hoops, those little ones. And you can get them at like, you know, they have them at Walmart. They have them at Hobby Lobby. They have them at Joann's. And they're the four inch ones. So I picked a, you know, a normal size that it was so it wasn't hard to find them. And um, so you just take a four inch hoop, you put the fabric in there, and then you can decorate them any way you want. So, so I decorated mine. Oh, hi, Marsha. Did you get back? You must have dropped out and come back. Are people having trouble finding me tonight or having trouble getting in and out? So anyway, this is what we're going to make tonight. I just thought if we're going to have kind of a uh, Christmas in July theme this month. Since we're going to be starting next week, we'll be starting We Whisk You Merry Christmas. And um, the last week in July, we're going to do a Christmas um, project on our scan and cut. So we're going to do Christmas in July. And um, I like making ornaments. And I just thought people would, especially if you have children or grandchildren that you have, you like to make something specialized or, you know, personalized for them each Christmas. This would be something simple that you could do in your software. It takes just a few minutes to make each name up. And then you can just stitch them out and make these little hoops. So they were, they were very fun to do. Okay, so I'm going to close this up. Give me just a second here. And we'll bring open our software. So are there any questions so far about like um, what, what I put these in, like, you know, the little hoops or anything. And we'll talk about the hoops and stuff at the end when I start talk. I tell you about, you know, sewing them. There's not much to sew on them. They're very easy, so. Okay, so I've got the software open here, and the the little screen that opens up um, is the uh, today screen, and you just click. We're going to click on create a new design because I want to start a new design from scratch. So we're just going to click on new, click on create a new design, and um, Marsha Lorio, I know you're here and you've been using a Mac for this, and I did find out that this little screen has not been coming up on the Mac version. I don't know if they've got it fixed now or not. So I know you asked me a question about this one time. And if that happens to you, let me show you another thing you can do. Because if that little screen doesn't come up, for those of you, and I think there might be a couple more of you that use Macs. Um, if this screen does not come up and you just close the screen right here, this, this screen can just be closed as well. Um, I can go into the software and it may be all gray on the screen that you're seeing right now. And if it is gray, uh, grayed out, you just need to wake up the software. So just go up and hit the icon on the top left hand side that looks like a piece of paper and just say new and it'll open up the software. So it's the same effect. They just it, they also put that little new or create a new design in that little window that opens up. And so I apologize if some of you um, aren't seeing that right now, because I think there was some sort of a problem that they were working on. Um, the other thing that I wanted to tell you is that some of you, um, just so you know, people have been asking me about, I can't find my, I got to find the right button to push here. Um, I can't find my designs anymore. It doesn't come up on the little screen. And that was also a question that some of the Mac users were using. But um, I found out why some of you no longer have the designs on the right hand, the top right hand side of your um, screen anymore. Some of you that had bought the software many, many years ago never bought the pro version of the software and you only had the sweet version. So when they did the new version of Toolshed, Remember when they did that about, oh, three or four months ago? Those people with only suite can still use it, but they, start, they, they stop giving you the designs. And I found that out just not too long ago, so that's why you're not seeing the designs in there anymore if you only have the suite. If you, bought, if you buy the upgrade or the, you know, the trade-up part, the upgrade to the pro version, then you'll get the designs back. OK, if you need them, I get them so I can get them for you. But that's what they did when they switched over to this new um, uh, embroidery tool shed. 
those of you with the suite are no longer getting the designs. That was that's that's a perk for the upgrades, I guess. I think they're trying to get people to upgrade to the pro version because the the suite version is no longer sold by itself. Just so you know, I mean that's. But a lot of you bought the software many years ago, and that's all you had, and you didn't have the pro version. So anyway, that's that's a little thing there that I found out <laughs> this, the last couple of weeks. Okay, so we've created our new design. We've got our software open. And the one thing that I like to do is I like to bring up a hoop on my screen so I have an idea, you know, how big my design is and it kind of, the one that I'm intending to sew this in. So to do that, on the left-hand side, now my computer screen is very small and you may be able to see the little hoop icon on my screen. Over on the left, I've got three little dots down on the, the bottom left, right above the color bar. And I have to click that because my hoop icon is there. If you have a bigger computer, it probably will show, but mine never does because my computer is really small. So I'm going to hit hoop and it'll open up my options of hoops that I can choose. And I know that I'm going to need to put this in um, my, my hoop that I'm going to put this in that little wood hoop is four inches. So I know I'm going to have to use a five by seven hoop for this. So I'm going to choose my 130 by 180 or five by seven hoop for this. So I'm going to click on that one. I'm going to click OK. And then, then my hoop is going to show up on my screen. So then it gives me a parameter and it's easier for me to judge, you know, where my design is and everything. I, I usually bring a hoop up. I don't always, but most of the time it's, I just find it useful so that I can see, um, you know, I can just see where I'm at and, and how close to the edges and stuff I'm, I am. So, okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to use not only the carousel tool, but we're going to use the text tool. So we're going to start out with the text tool so that we can get our name in here. Okay. Um, the text tool we've used before. And so this is going to look familiar, but the text tool is the letter T. So I'm going to click on the letter T, which is the text tool. And then you just have to come down here to the design space and click in the design space. And then all of the things that I can do with my text are going to open up over here in the properties box on the right hand on the top of the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the little box here that has the letter A in it. Whoops, hopefully. And I'm going to highlight the letter A and I'm just going to type my first name. I'm going to type Janice. Jan's kind of short, so we're just going to put Janice. Okay, so I have a few more letters. I'm just going to leave the height of the letters as they are, the spacing as it is. I don't really need to change that. We will change the size of this at, um, before we do the carousel tool. So I'm just going to leave it at the default settings. And um, when I was doing these, I like Girl, especially girls' letters, to be a little on the, um, you know, the frilly side. So I, I've i always loved, my, one of my favorite fonts in this software is Curly Q, because it's the one that has the little curls on the ends and all that. It, it's a, it's a quite a thin font, so that's why when I was using that thicker thread, I was having a little trouble with it breaking, because it is a fairly thin font. Um, so, um, and if you have, like, kids that have really um, short names, you might want something that's a little bit um, thicker so that it shows a little bit more. You may just have to play with some fonts. So any of the fonts will work with this. I just like these little frilly ones. So, um, but just, just play around with the fonts and just choose ones that you like. Um, for the boys, I usually use one that's a little plainer, not so frilly looking. There's a couple in here that are really, there's another one that's really cute that would work too. Um, I think it's called Kids. I use that one quite often for children and, it, and it's cute too. And it, it's kind of a, a font that's a little bit more simple, but it's also looks like maybe a kid drew it. Okay. So, but I'm, but I'm going to use Curly Q tonight. I've always liked that one. For girls, so we're, I'm a girl, so I'm going to use Curly Q. Got to find it again. Oh, here it is. All right, so I, I chose that on the right, the type of font that I wanted. And then you can see my my font changed over here. My name changed over to Curly Q. 
All right. So now the next thing I want to do when I when I put this together on the um, and then I have to mirror it a little bit. I want to make sure that the letters are really close together so that they're not they're that so they're almost touching. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make the screen a little bigger so you can see it. But we're going to use the tools in here. Scoot this over just a little bit so you can see it better. Um, you can see with the text tool still selected, there are a bunch of little boxes and things in here. Okay. The little black squares, or they're kind of diamonds because they have them on point, those allow me to kern or to move the letters very close together or further apart. So I'm just going to grab the A, the, the black diamond in the A and I'm going to pull that A over until I basically touch the J with it. So we want these very close together. And I'm going to take the N and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring it over and I want it to be basically touching the A. Now the one thing I'm also looking at is the bottom and you can see the purple line along there. I'm trying to keep the bottoms of the letters very even without having them sink or raise up too much. So I want the ends to be. Oh, yeah, Lynn, I had I had trouble too. So maybe maybe it was my me too. I don't know. All right. So then I'm going to get the A, the eye. Let's pull the eye over and get it lined up. And it's almost touching the end. So see, they're very close together. You know, normally when we do lettering, we wouldn't have maybe this close together. But for this exercise, we want it like this. So I'm going to pull the C over and basically touch the I. Okay. And then this is the E, and we're going to do the same thing with it. Pull it over so it touches the C. All right. Well, see how easy that was? You just I'm just grabbing those black diamond shapes, and I can move the, the letters around and kern them. Okay. Kerning is, is the spacing of the, of the letters. All right, so we've got them almost touching. I have to turn my page just a second so I won't miss anything. Okay, so now I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to go get the selection tool now. I'm going to go back up to the zoom at the top of the screen here, and I'm going to go to fit because I want to be able to see my, my hoop and that design. I would then like to move this over. I'm going to grab it and just kind of move it over into the workspace area. Um, the one thing I have I've always had trouble with with the software, and I think it's just me, um, if I have my text tool selected and I go to move this, I kind of get excited and I um, sometimes grab like a letter like this. And, and grab one letter and I, I've only moved one letter instead of all of them. So I have a tendency to, I, before I move my lettering around, I like to go get the selection tool so that I don't worry about moving my letters out of place. Okay. Oh, hi, Diane. You got in here too. Cool. All right. So then I've got my, my, my name. And I've got it all kerned, or I've got a the, the letters touching each other. I am ready now to make the mirror image of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, going to, I've got it selected already with the selection tool. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste. So copy and paste are the two icons right here. They look like, you know, the little piece of paper in the clipboard, just like most other software. I'm going to paste it. So now I got two of them. But what I want to do is I want to flip it so that it's like a mirror image. So there are mirror imaging tools here, but I want it to be the vertical one because I want it to be underneath the one I have. So I'm going to click flip vertical. Okay, so now so now I've got one. You can see them now. If I, if I go over here, you can see that they're both laying there, but they're kind of on top of each other. Well, I would like them to be um, connected on the bottom. Okay. Oh, Lynn, you're the, you're, you do the same thing I do. You grab, you just grab one letter. I always have to go get the selection tool. <laughs> Otherwise I have a problem. Okay. 
So, but the thing is with this mirror, since it's mirrored and I have the second one selected, I want that one directly below the first one and I don't want to just pull it down because if I pull it down, I'll probably move it out of place. So if I hold my control key down and I use my arrow key, I can move it down. Well, maybe. Sometimes I have to click on it. I don't know why it does this. Sometimes you just have to click on it and then it'll do it. Okay. So my control key and my arrow key on my keyboard, it's going straight down so that I'm not getting it out of alignment. And then I'm going to look at it here. And we basically want the um, letters to touch on the bottoms. Okay. So I got a little bit carried away. It's a little bit low. So I'm going to select it again. And I'm going to put my control key down and I'm going to bump it up just a little bit. Again, I'm going to go click on it. For some reason, it just likes to click. You have to click on it and then it'll go up. There we go. The software's always been like that. I even years ago, it was always like that. Okay, so I like that a little bit better. Let me bring this bigger so you can see it. I have the letters basically touching on the bottom. So it looks like my name is like sitting in a pool of water and you're seeing the reflection in the pool of water, okay? Now, I, I know about how big I want these little, these little fingers to be. So like these are like going to be like the little fingers of the snowflake. And I know about how big I want them to be. So I'm going to select all of this, get my selection tool. I'm going to go up to edit, select all, and then I have my all my information up here in the properties box, and I'm going to click over here on the arrow until I get to transform. It's the last screen, so I'm going to hit transform, and I know I want this to be about an inch and a half wide, okay? So I'm going to do the width, and you notice that maintain aspect ratio is checked. So I am going to leave that checked and I'm going to type in 1.5 because I know I want it about an inch and a half long and I'm going to click apply. So now that entire unit with my name and the mirror is an inch and a half long. Oh, hi, Sharon. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Jane. Okay, so now I've got my name, my mirror, and I know it's an inch and a half long. So it's like I'm going to turn my page again. Any questions so far? Is this making sense to everybody? It's very simple once you get going on these because you can make a ton of them, okay? Now, this is where we're going to get the carousel tool. So a lot of people have probably have never used this, and it's, it's very easy to use. So I'm going to go up here to the toolbar, and it's kind of in the middle, right under the zoom. It looks like a circle with little yellow polka dots. I'm going to click on the arrow next to the little circle because there's several tools in this in the carousel area. There's a carousel, a place, a reflect, and a scatter tool. So we're going to use the carousel tool this time. They used to call it the circle tool. And I'm not sure in the Floriani software, a couple of you have that too. It might still be called circle tool. I forgot to look today. But it's called the carousel. So we're going to do the carousel tool. And it's going to bring up this next box. And this is where we can change the settings that we want to use for the, the, our uh, carousel, so for our round design. Now, right now, as you can see on the screen, my little snowflake fig fingers are going the wrong direction. They're going, they're, they're going the wrong way. So I would like them to be... Um, I think it's going to be a 90 degrees. So I want them to be, you know, I want them to, the long sides to be out. So the first thing I'm going to change, if I go down through here and look, there's an angle. So I can do angle, individual path settings. And I want that to be 90 degrees. So I'm going to type in 90 and click apply. Oh, good. There, see it turned them over. So I want them to be in that orientation. And then this is where I had to do a little plane because I want my little fingers just to touch each other. So I had to kind of play around with 
the setting until I got the, the, the measurement right. Now, my name may not be the same as yours, so you may have to play a little bit here. Let me show you the picture that again. Um, I wanted these to touch right here. So let me just close this just for a second, and we'll look at the picture of the design again. But I want these to touch right where in the middle, right where my E's are. So they're touching and they make that real pretty little swirly frilly um, center to it then, okay? So I had to play around with that a little bit to get the measurement correct there. So what I did, oops, I gotta find the right thing down here, okay. So we'll go back into the carousel tool. It won't let you minimize with the carousel tool open. So that's why I had to get it out. Okay, so we'll go back and do our angle again of 90 degrees. Okay, so now we've got all of our little fingers. And the measurement that worked well for mine, I wanted the width, and you notice it also says keep aspect ratio. I want, the one that worked for mine was 2.85 inches, okay? Then I'm gonna click apply. And it brought my little fingers, my little snowflake fingers all together and the whole center then is just touching each other. It's not, I don't really, didn't really want it to go over each other. I kind of wanted it to come right up to it. So everybody's going to have to kind of play with that measurement a little bit to, to see which will work for the names you're doing. Okay. Don't be afraid to play with that number. You can change it. Like, you know, I started with, oh, I thought maybe three would be fine. So I put three in there and see, they didn't quite touch. So I thought, well, let's see, we'll try maybe three. Uh, 2.75. So I thought, oh, maybe that'll work. And then I did that and then they overlapped. So then we played around. Okay. So 2.85 seemed to work for my design. Okay. And I did apply. All right. So then there's a couple of other measurements or other little boxes that we want to put in here. The auto rotate means that it is going to rotate the, the each, each one in the same direction. And I want to click this little block box that says auto resequence by color. Because if I was doing this with a design that um, had multiple colors, I usually just do it whether it is or not. But if you click auto resequence by color, if you had a little design here, because um, you can use this with designs, and I'll show you quickly at the end. I can just bring something else in that's like two or three colors, and then it will automatically put all the red together, all the green together, all the blue together, and so on. So we'll, I'll show you with another design how it works too. So you, you can use this with something besides lettering is what I'm saying. So I'm going to do the auto resequence by color. I think I'm happy with the way it looks now, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then it's going to show up on my screen in the middle of my design page. And I've got my hoop there. So there is my design. And this is a one color design. And at this point, I'm done. I'm happy with that. It's a one color design. So that's how I did the blue one that I did. The one that I put the little patriotic um, strap on. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save. So let me just go file. Actually, no, I'm not gonna save it yet. We wanna do something else yet because after I thought about this a little bit, I thought, well, I've gotta have something to help me get this in the hoop. So we have to do a couple of other lines first. So we'll save it in a minute. Okay, so we've got our carousel tool done. We've got it the way, the way we want it. And now we need to finish it up and make it into our little ornament design. Just a second here, I gotta get my papers out of the way. Okay, so the, when I'm, I'm gonna do some measurements here in a minute. And like the first measurement we used was 3.5 for the, for, um, I needed, I know I needed to have my design about three and a half inches in diameter to fit in my hoop. So when you buy your hoops, like I said, I used four inch hoops and you're gonna wanna measure your hoops so that you know for sure that your hoops are the same size um, so what I did is I measured my hoop from, you know, I measured like the inside loop part that goes inside across the center so that I knew exactly how big it was. And then I wanted my design 
to be slightly smaller than that. So my measurement on my hoop was three and a half. So my design is actually going to end up being 3.5 inches. Okay. And we're going to change that size here in a minute. The outside measurement it was just under four inches. It wasn't quite four inches. It's a four inch hoop, but it wasn't quite four inches. It was actually on my hoop, it was three point, it was three and seven eighths. So I also need to make note of that measurement. So I had measured from the loop part that's on the inside. I measured from edge to edge. Okay, so there was two measurements I came up with. Measure your own hoops because they'll be maybe slightly different, okay? And um, so I want to make this now into a design that I can put in my little hoop. And I needed a couple of things to help me get it in there straight. So what we're going to do is add a couple of lines to this as like applique lines to help us get it hooped um, straight in the hoop. Okay. And it also kind of holds it all together for us and that type of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle. So to draw a circle in the software, I like to use the artwork tools and I'm gonna use the artwork tools up here on the right and the little arrow next to it, I want the ellipse tool because I'm gonna draw a circle. And I would like it to be a perfect circle. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my perfect circle. I'm gonna kind of draw on the right hand side of my hoop here. I'm gonna put my control key down and I'm gonna drag from the top left to the bottom right and then I will have a perfect circle, okay? By holding your control key down, you get a perfect circle. Now I'm gonna select my circle. So I'm gonna go get the selection tool and I'm going to select it so it's selected and I would like to transform it because this is going to be my outside circle that's the size from the entire all the way across my hoop. Okay, so this is going to be bigger than my design. So the, my measurement was three and seven eighths, which translates to 3.87, 3.87. I had to do math. I had to get my calculator out to do the math. Okay, I'm going to click apply. So that circle, it needs to be 3.87 inches in diameter. Okay. Now I want to get my design the size I want it. So the design's a little bit bigger right now. So I'm going to go click on my design, my group, whoops, second, my group design here. And that is the one that I want 3.5 because I want just a little smaller than my outside circle. So I'm going to select it. I have to go back to the properties box and go all the way over again with a little arrow to transform. And right now it's over four inches, so it needs to be smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got the maintain aspect ratio on and I'm going to type in 3.5 because that's what I want and click apply. So now my snowflake design is 3.5 inches in diameter and my circle is 3.87. Okay. Well, but they don't work very well where they are right now. So we need to get them all centered on each other. So I'm going to select my circle, hold my control key down, select my snowflake, and then I'm going to go up at the top, all these alignment tools. So I'm going to align it horizontally first, and then I'm going to hit the vertical center, and it will center them on each other. So you have to do center and middle is basically what it is. Okay, one's vertical, one's horizontal. Well, now the whole thing's out of my sewing field, my hoop, my hoop size. So to get it in there, if I right click on the, um, the little toolbar or the, the little uh, measurement bar at the top, right click on there, there is a little button that says center origin. So I'm gonna click on center origin and then it moves the whole thing to the center of my hoop and the center of my workspace. So now it's all centered on each other. Okay. All right. I got to check my notes, make sure I don't miss anything. All right. Now our circle, remember we use the artwork tool. So if I go over here, I'm going to pull this up just a little bit so you can see a little better. If I go over here and look at my circle right now, it just says it's artwork. Well, we need it to be stitches because we need it to sew. 
So I'm going to select it. It's the second piece. I'm going to select it. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to convert to a run because I just need it to be a running stitch. And when I have done that, now I have to change my properties for my run stitch. So my stitch length, I would like it to be 2.5, which is a nice standard length. I would like it to be a standard, which is fine. And then I am going to apply. So I have to pull my little box down again. There you go, to apply. Okay. So now my, my uh, circle on the outside is um, 2.5 millimeters, the, the stitch, and it's, a, it's now a straight stitch or a running stitch. I also need to do a little bit of, I need to make sure that it locks in so that it won't come undone. So I'm going to go up here to my commands tool while it's still selected. And I'm going to tie in with a basic and tie off with a basic. And then I'm going to click apply. All right, so we got our tie in and our tie off. All right, so what that, what that, first circle is going to be is going to be a placement line for my fabric because I sewed these on fabric, of course. So I needed a little placement line to tell me where to lay my fabric down in my hoop. Okay. But I need the machine to stop. So what I'm going to do is select my circle and I'm going to change it to color number two by right clicking on the color two box so that I have it, it is two separate colors. And then I want the circle though to sew first because we need a placement line for the fabric. So we need it first. So I'm just gonna grab the circle, which is now second, grab it and pull it up to the words all items and then drop it. And now it is going to sew first. So here is, this is in my sequence view. Here's the circle and then here's the snowflake, all right? But I got to thinking about this a little bit more. So I needed a placement line for my fabric. Well, then I also needed a tack down line so that it would sew around there and hold my fabric to the stabilizer. And the um, outline then would be a good help for me for hooping because it's the same size as the inside of the hoop. And then I can arrange the fabric by using that outline to help me get it in the hoop straight. So we need another line. To do that, I've got it selected, my outline, just the, the circle. I'm going to go up to copy and paste. So now you can see over here, I have two, but I also need that to be, I need it to stop. So I'm going to choose another color for the second one because I want the first one to sew. I'm gonna put my fabric down on top of that. And then I want it to sew the fabric down to the hoop. So I need it to stop again. So the second one, I'm gonna right click on the color box number four so that it will stop. So I have a running stitch tech, or a placement line, a running stitch, tack down line for my fabric, and then it's gonna sew out my snowflake. So this is my, my single colored snowflake. I'm very happy with this, so I'm ready to save now. So I'm gonna go up to File, Save As, and I'm going to save this, I'll just save it on my desktop tonight. I'm gonna type, type in Janice, and I'm gonna save it as a C2S, because I always want to save a C2S so I have a working file to go back to, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click save. It's going to go on down on my desktop. But then I also need a PES file to put in my sewing machine. So I'm going to go to file, save as, and then under save as type, I want to go to PES version 9. I'm going to call it Janice and click save. So there's the first snowflake. That was the blue one. Okay. So we'll show you the blue one again here. 
All right, that's how I did it. So the first outline is the placement line to help you put your fabric down. You put your fabric in the hoop, sew down the tack, line, tack down line, which will also help you get, in, get it into the hoop um, straight, and then it sews out the name. So it's very easy to sew these. There's just three little steps, okay? So that's the blue one. Now, I looked at it and I thought, well, that, that's really pretty. I really like it. But wouldn't it be cool if I had like every other little name, a different color? So I thought, well, let's just do some different colors. So to make it, a, to make you can use the same design and now we can make it multicolored. So to do that, we're going to go down to the bottom here where the grouping is. This is the, the snowflake and it's under the word group because it grouped it together with the carousel tool automatically. And I would like that to be ungrouped because I wanna get pieces of it. So I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna go up here to the top. There's two ways to ungroup. You can go up to your toolbar and you can kind of slide across towards the, the right and there's a button on the top that says ungroup. So I can click that and it will ungroup it. Another way to ungroup is to have your group selected. You can right click on it and ungroup is also under right click. So there's a couple ways to do it. All right, so now I've got it ungrouped. And so if I look in my sequence view here now, give me a second, I'll pull this up a little bit so you can see better. I have all these texts and they are the, all of the, the, the names are now separated. So I would like to select every other one. That's how I did mine. So I thought, well, I'm going to select the first one and then I'm going to hold my control key down and I'm going to skip one and get the, the third one and just keep going down every other one till I get to the bottom. There's a bunch of them, so. Okay, we'll get the rest of them here. I have to scroll a lot on my computer. It's kind of small. Okay. All right. So I think we got every other one. I'm just going to make sure I got every other one. Looks like it all the way around. Okay, so I had my control key down while I was doing that. And now I'm going to go down and I'm going to right click on the number three color box just to change the color of these. So it's a different color. And now I've got my names or every other, every other one's a different color. Okay, so, but if you look over here in the sequence view, um, now it's going to do green, blue, green, blue, green, blue, green, blue. Well, we don't want to have to sit there and change the colors 15 times, do we? Okay. So in order to get that fixed, let's go up here. I'm going to go over here to edit. And I'm going to go down to the word resequence by color, because we can also resequence by color here. I'm just going to click on that. And if you look now on the, in the sequence view, you will see that now all of the greens are together and all of the blues are together. So then you only, you only have to change the colors. Well, literally three, I did three times, I guess, cause I used white for the, the, um, the placement and the tack down lines, okay? So see, isn't that, isn't that slick? You can resequence by color. So let's say, you know, you had a, a design that you brought in like five times and it had three colors. Normally, if you didn't resequence the colors, it would do the first one and then the second one and then the third one and you'd have to change the colors each time. But if you go into edit resequence by color, it'll put all the reds together, all the blues together, all the greens, whatever. So it is a very neat tool and it's very fast to do. So it really helps um, it's so much faster to, to, you don't have to change the colors so often. Okay. So I just did that. So I've got my, my, my green names and then my blue names. And then before that I have the two circles. Okay. So I'm happy with that. I'm ready for that one to be saved as well. So we're just going to go file, save as, I also want to save it as a C2S. So I'm going to call it Janus 2 and save it on my desktop. And then I'm gonna go file, save as, and this time I'm gonna make it a PES version nine. 
and leave it as the same name and click Save. So now I have both of my designs done. I was able to make two designs from one and I was able to resequence the colors so that it was much easier to sew. Okay, so are there any questions on the digitizing? Did this all make sense to everybody? Because I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how I sewed them then. And you might wanna take a few notes. I didn't write this all down. There's so little you need for this that I think you'll be able to do it with no problems, but you might wanna take a few notes about the measurements that I used for my ornaments, then you'll know like the fabrics and stuff. So are there any questions so far? Wasn't the digitizing easy? Isn't that little carousel tool cool? Let me show you one really quick thing. Let's, I'll show you one really quick thing um, for the carousel tool. So let's say you have a cute little design. Let's go pick up a little, pick out a little design here. Let's say, let's see. I think I want to click this tool. Um, let's pick out a little design. And let's see, how about the bunnies? Okay, so you can use these in here too. So here's some little rabbits, okay? I can, I can get into the carousel tool. And there's the little bunnies all going around in a circle. Wouldn't that be cute to put that on like a little table center or something and, and, and do all the little bunnies? But maybe I don't like the size of them. Maybe I want them to be nine inches see what it looks like. Okay, so now they're a little further apart and they're not touching. So then I could play with them or maybe I wanted my bunnies to be going a little different direction. So let's try a different direction to see what that does. So see, so you can use these on um, with the design with the other designs as well. So let's try three inches and see what that does here. So I just like to play with this tool. Well, that looks a little weird. So we don't want that. How about uh, five? Try five. I'm having trouble typing tonight. There we go. See what happens. Oh, that's cool. So see now the little bunnies are going. But you know, maybe they need to be going the other direction because they're all hopping in. Maybe we'd like them to hop out. So let's see. Um, I probably need to turn these around. Let's try apply. Whoops, that's not the way. Let's see. 360. Let's do 360. I was have to, I'm not good at directions, so I have to kind of play around. I like 90 better. We'll just do 90. There we go. So that the little bunnies are hopping in. So you can play with this, this tool with other things besides the, um, the lettering. And for, for sure, I wanna hit this auto resequence by color right now because then it will do it automatically if I click apply and okay. Now, if you look at my group here, it's got all the green, all the white, all the, I think it was like a brownish color. So there was, there was four colors and see how they're all resequenced by color there. And you don't have to do it manually. So like the little bunny ears and the little outlines and stuff, they're all done separately. So that's, so that, that's automatic in that, that carousel tool. But we use the manual version of it with ours since we changed it in the middle. Okay. So yes, you can use this with lots of different things. You can use the, um, there's lots of build-in designs in this software, tons in fact, and um, they're fun to play with. You just, you just kind of pick a little design and start playing with it and get, see what you get for results. Just start typing things in the, in the numbers and um, it really is fun to play with. So, okay. So let's talk a little bit about sewing it, sewing our little, our little ornament. So let's bring the little ornament up here. And when I sewed this, so what I did is I cut my squares six by six, and I also put a piece of shape flex. So this was just cotton fabric. It had like little silver um, flex on it. And then I ironed a piece of shape flex on the back, that Pelon SF 101 on the back, just to give it some body. And it made the uh, ornament a little stiffer then. Okay, so I did that. I used tearaway in the hoop, my five by seven hoop, and then these wood little um, uh, hand embroidery hoops are four inches. So I bought the four inch ones. 
And then you can put any kind of embellishments on you want. You know, see, I used some little pom poms and I had some bows and, and I had some uh, ribbon for the top. And then what I do, the first thing you do, you know, put just, just uh, um, hoop your tear away in the hoop. Sew out step number one, which is your placement line. Okay. Then lay your fabric in the hoop over the placement line. Try to keep it as centered as possible. And then tack, um, sew or sew down the tacking line, which is step number two. Now, the one thing I did, I would suggest is use a fabric or a thread that is the same color as your fabric. Because then um, if it shows just a little bit, it's not that noticeable. So I used white because I had white fabric. Okay, that's that was just a suggestion I would make. And then the next thing that will sew then is all your names. So you'll either have one or two colors in your names or whatever you decide to do. If you want three or more, you can do whatever you want. And then that that's the entire sewing. I take I took it out of the hoop, took off all the tear away as much as I could get off. And then what I did is I just hooped the, the fabric in the hoop. I left this, with the six inch square, there was plenty around the outside edge. So I could easily put it into the little hoop tighten it up real tight. And then what I normally do is I, um, I should have taken a picture of the back of this, but what I do is I take the fabric and I take a glue gun and I glue it to the inside of the hoop on the back, just so that it's nice and strong and it's not gonna come out. You can just cut it off if you want to, but sometimes they, they loosen up on you. So I've always taken a glue gun and just wrapped the fabric around and then glued it to the inside of the hoop. And then I just took a piece of felt and covered up the back to make it prettier. So it was very simple. So these are really cute. I should have taken a picture of the back of it, I forgot. So I'll, I'll put a, back, a picture of the back of it up um, a little later this afternoon or this evening, I'll take a picture of the front and the back together so you can see what the back looks like. But it was really easy. And then I made my little bows. Um, I like, I have this really cool bow maker. I make porcelain dolls. So I have a friend that made us all these awesome wood um, bow makers. And so I made my bow with my bow maker because it has all the pretty little, the little um, tines in the center and, and my bows are always really pretty that way. I have trouble making bows. So I got my bow maker out and made these pretty bows and then I hot glued that to it and then I hot glued the little tiny little pom-poms around the outside edge. So it was a simple little thing but I thought it would make a really nice personalized gift for Christmas and it wouldn't take long if you had to do a bunch of them. So okay. So is any, any questions about the sewing? It's very simple to sew. There's not much to the sewing. And I did, I used the bow maker on this one too. I liked the ribbon for this one, so. Okay, is there any other questions? I haven't decided what we're gonna do in August yet. The class, the, the uh, software class for August will be, I think it's the second. Is that the first Sunday in August? I forgot to look. I think it's the, I think it's the second, but I haven't decided what I wanna do yet. So if anybody has any ideas, let me know. Yeah, it's the 2nd of August. So we'll have a we'll have a software class on the 2nd of August, the next one. And then next week, we're going to start We Whisk You a Merry Christmas, for those of you who are doing that. So we're going to be starting that next Sunday. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to make the blocks. And then the next month, we will um, start putting it together. So it's a very fun little quilt to do, but I thought it'd be fun to have some Christmas in July. I often don't get to make Christmas gifts or Christmas projects because it's too busy in the fall. So I thought maybe we'll do them this summer instead. <laughs> so I've been having fun making Christmas presents. So, okay. So are there any other questions? This is a very fun project and it was really easy and, and fast. Um, I enjoyed these little classes I took over the spring because I found a bunch of cool ideas for classes. So, and there's a lot of little features of the software that are really neat. I think what we might do in August is talk about the um, auto digitizing wizard because it actually works quite well and uh, we really haven't talked about it. So I think that we might do that in August. So, okay. All right. So if there's any questions, I'll put a picture of the back of it of them. Um, I'll take pictures of both of them and then the back so you can see what I did. 
And um, if there's any questions about the sizes or anything, isn't it a cute idea? I just thought it would be something that would be easy that you could make for your, because I like to make personalized, you know, things and it's not, it doesn't take long. It took me longer to sew it than it did for me to digitize it. <laughs> um, yes, Colleen, I sent you an email about that. Um, I sent you the email about that. Yes. Um, for the Kimberbell, you mean the Oh, you mean the celebration, the Star Spangled celebration? Um, Colleen, yes, I did send that out um, yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, yesterday I sent it out. So you check your email. Maybe it went to your spam. I sent that out yesterday with the information. And um, I did have a link in there. So it might possibly have gone to your spam folder. But um, everything's ready for you to pick up and um, all the stuff's ready to be picked up and, and everything, so. Or you've been sewing. Okay, yeah, so go check your email, Colleen. All right, so if anybody has any questions about this or if you need um, any questions about the sewing or anything, I don't think you'll have any trouble. There's not much to it. So just remember to use um, fabric that's large enough so that it easily goes into the hoop and you have some extra to put around the back and I'll, I'll take some pictures of the backs um, and put them up with the front so you can see them. So, okay. Alrighty. So if you have any questions, give me a call, message me or um, email me. So I will see you next week for We Whisk You a Merry Christmas. Thanks everybody. Have a good evening.